So um, we're going to talk about the Be More and the new uh, control panel module that's um, you can replace your old um, control panel with a new one with it, which has some new features. One of them being drum speed. We're going to look at the roasting and taste it and sort of see what we think the differences are initially. Um, I'm sure over time we'll sort of have more comments on this, but this is sort of a first impression thing. I want you to see the sophisticated um, studio that we shoot in, the lighting, the makeup artist. Um, my absolutely least favorite um, mug. Jose brought these in and he said these were genuine, they were from Africa. And I didn't want to disagree, so. Anyway, um, let's take a look here at some roasts. So Byron did these roasts on the Be More. The, the roast times were slightly different, um, but the settings were the same. And this one, uh, the coffee we used was the uh, Dereje Dairy Kachoa coffee that we have now from Ethiopia. It's a washed Ethiopia. Just as long as it's a good washed coffee, that I think those are better for testing in general because you don't have as much randomness from the processing. Um, this one took 11.15 to get to the same color as this one, which was 10.45. Uh, minutes and this one is the slow drum speed this one's the fastest drum speed setting and we can take a look at the roast results here of the bean uh, the exterior of the bean while we talk a little about this um, recently a lot of commercial roaster manufacturers have added drum speed control a variable speed control to um, to their machines and one of the ideas is that uh, a faster drum speed has an equivalent effect of an increased airflow um, in roasting. So it gives you one more, um, one more thing you can control, as well as the fact that um, the, the, the different batch sizes, what they call a charge, what you're charging the drum with in a commercial roaster, if it's 10 kilos or 12 kilos, whatever it is, um, that you could compensate for that because the pattern that the bean uh, has uh, the rotation in the drum, the movement, when it falls away from the drum and is sort of in the air in a free fall, um, could be controlled with drum speed. It's a little different on the B more, but what's really exciting is that the B more has no airflow control. You can't control the speed of the fans in any other way. So this kind of adds that dimension to roasting, which we haven't had before. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, what we see here in the in the roasted coffee, so we've taken this Sweet Maria's tray and this side is slow and this side is fast on, on all this, what we're going to look at here. Um, by the way, the, it's really important what color the background is that you look at, at tr try to look at color um, differences and the lighting source. I'm just using this small little IKEA LED light. Um, I find sometimes a, too much of a directional light, you kind of want a soft, even light, and even this is sort of pushing it because you get more reflectance. Um, judging color is a very sophisticated thing, as any designer or person knows or whatever. So, or um, I used to do color correction, so I know that the lighting source and the, the, the um, essentially the calibration of the light, whether it's a good daylight source or not, is really important. It's not too yellow, it's not too blue. I think most people are aware of that, but also the reflectance really changes it. And with roast color, um, these browns are very difficult to perceive. So you, I feel like just a, a decent strong light is always better than poor lighting condition where frankly all the browns look the same. We're going to look at surface color and then we're going to look at ground coffee color. And the reason that's important is essentially you're looking at the color of the exterior of the bean versus the interior and you're trying to gauge if there's any difference and a lot of times that's pretty difficult to perceive um, and it takes some kind of imagination you sort of have to blur your eyes and sort of make an effort but I feel you can do it fairly well and certainly between ground coffees you can tell very easily which one's lighter and darker it's a normal part of the cup of excellence procedure before you go to the cupping table to look at all the ground coffees aligned next to each other and decide if any are light or dark and how that's going to affect your scoring. So here what I see between these two um, is really good parity. Um, 
I, and, and besides color, I'm also looking at, um, to some degree, how even the roast is, and also to some degree, how the puff of the bean is, meaning how it expanded. And um, I can't really demonstrate those because these are fairly equal. I do see some things here in this roast that are a little more uneven, that are sort of like semi-Quaker beans or didn't develop the color. Uh, that's, a, that's a partial Quaker there. And down in here, but I believe that's the coffee more than the roast uh, speaking to us there. Um, so that is the faster drum speed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the, um, the, the, uh, the ground coffee. One trouble with evaluating the ground coffee is that the chaff particles in it can throw your perception of color. Um, so this is the slow drum speed and this is the fast. And I've said that I think color-wise they're fairly equivalent on the exterior. And what I like to do is then take a spoon, a cupping spoon or something, and bring these two together. And I think this is a really handy technique to understanding your roasting um, at any scale, home roast, any roast. All roasting is roasting. So Now, what I see here, and I don't always know because it, even, even on my, my fancy camera, not an iPhone, these are difficult to, to photograph and to, to, to video. Um, what I see here is a, a very small shade of um, dark darkness on the ground here and slightly lighter on there. That makes a lot of sense to me um, that what we may have had happen here is that the exterior of the fast roast is the same color but the interior is a little bit lighter. So we've already tasted these um, coffees but just for uh, ridiculous video demonstration purposes, I'll taste them again. Um, we have some combined notes um, from from uh, uh, some of the staff here. We we uh, Byron roasted these last night. Uh, two nights ago. Two nights ago. That's actually really good. So we have a little rest on it. Mm-hmm. Hey Dan, why don't you come taste the, taste these? So, um, what we have found already is slight disagreement on which of these two roasts is sweeter. So, by the way, in absence of a really highly functioning um, Agtron, like our we have, um, there's the um, the the uh, roast color classification kit that the SCAA did a long time ago. And it's still a, a really handy tool. Um, and these, uh, it was done in combination with Agtron, which is a color spectronomy company for um, agriculture products with, I think, a lot of emphasis in coffee. And um, it, it also took a lot of interpretation to, um, to kind of evaluate color. Let's just take out these three and say, okay, which one of these three best represents the color of the coffees here. Probably the one to the right. Okay, I was going a little more towards the middle, but the main thing is to try to see the see the differences, not necessarily to match those. Oops. And um, is to tr uh, so that would be uh, eighty five, or I'm sorry, seventy five would. I mean, be this is big. definitely darker in okay. appearance, but yeah. So everyone here has agreed that this, this has a darker interior appearance, but I felt there was a good parity between the exterior of the beans. Yeah, um, yeah. I can't see anything that would, sorry, I'm blocking the light, that would really distinguish these two roasts. Is this the fast drum speed? Yeah, we're fast okay. on this side, slow on this That's side. That's interesting because when we tasted the fast, we thought it had a little bit more, I mean, it was flattened out, but something about the sweetness seemed like it actually was... I thought it actually had a little bit, was a little bit sweeter. I think the perceived acidity in this was a little higher. The slow roast, and everyone on the staff agreed, we had, for some people, it had an improved sweetness. 
Um, but definitely the word that was repeated over and over was a kind of flatness, meaning that the dynamic range between the top notes in the cup, the sort of tenor and bass, was more compressed. So, um, so it kind of had flattened out a bit. But what was really interesting when we tasted that is we thought, that's a great espresso. So it could be that this slower rotation of the drum uh, you, on, on the B-more might create a better espresso profile. On the fast roast, we had certainly more acidity. Um, it was brighter and dynamic. I found it a little bit sweeter, but I think that was simply because we're testing it as a drip coffee, and I think it's better suited to drip. So, um, and I think um, Amanda, actually, who's a really good cupper, felt that the blend of these two might be really interesting. Right. She felt that she liked the sweetness from the slower roast and the sort of dynamic brightness from the lighter roast, and um, that the two together might form a better cup than the ones individually. Um, but what it, whatever the case, it kind of gives you a, a different tool for um, shaping the flavor profile that you're looking for by using this uh, roast setting.